Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you once again for joining me today. Uh, I really do appreciate it. You are uh, a uh, f select few people who have decided to accept this challenge and to carve out this time during Lent to spend some alone time uh, with God. And I appreciate you uh, sharing this moment with me as we uh, together uh, try to deepen uh, our relationship with God, our understanding um, of him by learning from him and his still small voice as we uh, do our work together here. Well, I wanted to start out as I usually do with this uh, world's greatest collection of church jokes. Um, I don't know if you would call this a joke or not. It's kind of amusing, I guess you might say, but it's entitled, Why Sermons? It says an anonymous letter writer sent his or her letter to the local newspaper editor complaining that church attendance made no sense. I've gone for 30 years, he wrote, and I've heard something like 3,000 sermons, but for the life of me, I can't remember a single one of them. So I think I'm wasting my time, as are the preachers, for even bothering to deliver a sermon at all. Now, this letter started a real controversy on the op-ed page. It went on for weeks until someone wrote this clincher. I've been married for 30 years. In that time, my wife has cooked some 32,000 meals. But for the life of me, I can recall the menu of few, if any, of those meals. I do know, though, they all nourished me and gave me the strength I need to do my work. If my wife had not given me those meals, I'd be dead today. Well, no more comments about sermon contents have appeared on the op-ed page since then. I found that amusing. I hope you did too. Well, as we continue on uh, together in this book, um, A Guide uh, to Prayer for Ministers and Other Servants, uh, we are uh, moving into the third Sunday in Lent, and our theme for this week is thirsting for God. So. Uh, Everything that we read, um, prayers that we say, the scriptures that we read, uh, the thoughts that are shared by other authors and so forth, is all going to revolve around this theme of our thirsting for God. So let's start off uh, with an invocation as we invite the Holy Spirit into our time here together. Let's pray. Lord of life and love. Help us to worship you in the holiness of beauty, that some beauty of holiness may appear in us. Quiet our souls in thy presence with the stillness of a wise trust. Lift us above dark moods and the shadow of sin, that we may find your will for our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. That was an uh, invocation taken from the book of worship. Well, our first uh, scripture reading um, uh, comes from Psalm 42. Uh, we always uh, start out with the psalm. So Psalm 42, you can uh, open your Bible to that or uh, pull it up on a Bible app uh, on your phone. You go to BibleGateway.com. You can pull it up there. But Psalm 42. Two. This is uh, uh, titled for the director of music, a mascal of the sons of Korah. You'll probably recognize this once we begin to read it together. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior 
and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar, deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Well, again, uh, the idea is not for me to uh, point out to you kind of what uh, struck me in that, um, but, but to ask yourself what word or phrase uh, came to your attention, as that may be a clue that the Holy Spirit is wanting you uh, to meditate on that particular word or phrase a little bit more. Well, our New Testament reading also comes from a psalm, and it's Psalm 63, verses 1 through 8. So you can flip right over to Psalm 63 or pull that up in your Bible app. Verses 1 through 8, this is a psalm of David when he was in the desert of Judah. You are, you God are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. So there we have the uh, theme uh, coming through loud and clear again. And certainly after what we've been through over the last year, we may feel like we're in a dry and parched land where there's no water. It goes on, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night, because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Well, uh, because of our core value of worshiping uh, through music, we put a lot of value on that and the way that we worship through our music at St. James. Uh, that with singing lips, my mouth will praise you. Uh, that is a core value of ours and uh, kind of spoke to me there. Well, our reading for reflection today uh, comes from A Cry for Mercy by Henry J. M. Nguyen. And this is what he writes. Listen, O Lord, to my prayers. Listen to my desire to be with you, to dwell in your house, and to let my whole being be filled with your presence. But none of this is possible without you. When you are not the one who fills me, I am soon filled with endless thoughts and concerns that divide me and tear me away from you. Even thoughts about you, good spiritual thoughts, can be little more than distractions when you are not their author. Oh Lord, thinking about you, being fascinated with theological ideas and discussions, being excited about histories of Christian spirituality and stimulated by thoughts and ideas about prayer and meditation, all of this can be as much an expression of greed as the unruly desire for food, possessions, or power. Every day I see again that only you can teach me to pray. Only you can set my heart at rest. Only you can let me dwell in your presence. No book, no idea, no concept or theory will ever bring me close to you unless you yourself are the one who lets these instruments become the way to you. But Lord, let me at least remain open to your initiative. Let me wait patiently and attentively 
for that hour when you will come and break through all the walls I have erected. Teach me, O Lord, to pray. Amen. Well, that was a good one, wasn't it? And uh, really uh, speaks into our thirst, thirsting for God, uh, which is our theme, and also really speaks into the whole reason that we are doing this, uh, this idea of um, waiting patiently and attentively for that hour when he will come and break through all the walls that we've erected. And so uh, as we uh, prepare to go into that time of uh, quiet uh, meditation and reflection on these scriptures and prayers uh, and words that have been written, uh, good thoughts there to think about, um, about allowing that thirsting for God uh, so much, uh, seeking him earnestly. Uh, he tells us that um, all those who seek him will find him when we seek him with all of our heart. And so I pray uh, that you would be able to uh, turn your mind off of anything else as you go into that quiet time and allow God uh, to speak to you through his still small voice. I pray that he will break through to you uh, today. Well, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for this time together. We thank you for our friends and family. We thank you for our church family. And we thank you that uh, as uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, we have each other. We uh, offer our prayers up for one another. We do that not just every Sunday, but we do it every day of the week. We carry those prayer requests with us. It is a blessing to be able to pray for one another and to hold each other up. And so we uh, are thankful for that today and uh, praise you and give you honor and glory uh, as we worship you uh, today. Lord, we do ask for your healing touch as always on those who need it. And you know, Lord, what their every need is. You know exactly what kind of a touch they need. And so we pray that for each and every one of them now. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, as you prepare to go into that silent time, again, I would uh, urge you to take a journal with you and a pen. And as you are hearing from uh, God, be sure to write down um, those thoughts. Uh, it may lead to more questions. Uh, it may lead to conclusions. It may lead to uh, some deepening thoughts that you want to be able to uh, reflect on. And so take that journal with you, spend some quiet time with God and write down uh, the things that you feel like he may be teaching you or asking you or um, encouraging you to dig a little deeper on. Well, our hymn is um, as Pants the Heart for Cooling Streams by Nahum Tate and Nicholas Brady. That's probably Nahum or something like that. Nahum Tate and Nicholas Brady. Um, and the first verse goes like this. As pants the heart for cooling streams when heated in the chase. So longs my soul, O God, for thee and thy refreshing grace. Well, maybe you are kind of feeling like you're going through a spiritual desert right now. Maybe the, the long uh, pandemic that we've had to go through, the separation from family, from church family, uh, just has you feeling dry and parched. And you feel as one that is panting. Uh, when heated in the chase. Uh, that may be how your soul is longing to feel the presence of God again, to feel the presence of God in community with your brothers and sisters uh, in Christ and really seeking that refreshing grace. And I just, my prayer is that you experience that now as you go into this time of quiet reflection and meditation, uh, spending some time alone with your creator, God. Uh, uh, through the power of his, his Holy Spirit as it speaks to you today. So as uh, you prepare to do that, hear then this um, benediction. May God be your source of peace and power all day long. Amen and amen. Thank you again so much for joining me. It means a lot to me that you are carving this time out to spend this time with me and, and now to go and spend this time uh, with God as you grow in your relationship with him. So we will see you again back here tomorrow at noon. Blessings on you.